Hello investigators and welcome to Until the End of Time, my name is Werner. It's been a while and I'm glad to be back, thank you all for joining me. Uh, today's video is going to feature a card that is not officially been announced yet, uh, one of the leaks. If you are trying to avoid those, please tune out now because I don't want to ruin the surprise for you or anything. So this is your one and only warning, this video will contain leaked content. Thank you. Okay, everybody's still here, let's talk about Chainsaw. Wow. Okay, so this is the third and, uh, as far as we know, final card which is more than 3 XP in the Stella deck. So for the longest time, survivors only had uh, 1, 2, 3, or of course 0 XP cards. They didn't have any 4s or 5s. And the Stella deck is the first time we are seeing 4 and 5 XP uh, survivor cards. We've seen two permanent cards, and now we're seeing a non-permanent card in the form of Chainsaw. A 4 cost asset, 4 XP, 3 combat icons, which that alone says something. It is an item, tool, weapon, and melee traded. It uses 3 supplies, and it has an action to spend 1 supply to fight. You get plus 2 combat and deal plus 2 damage for this attack. If this attack fails, either place a supply on chainsaw or deal 1 damage to the attacked enemy. And it takes up 2 hand slots. Okay. Survivors have their lightning gun now, or their uh, big shotgun, or whatever. This is a big weapon, and this is a big deal. So that ability is very reminiscent of the Derringers, the .18 Derringers that are also in Stella's deck. But where this differs, of course, is that we have a much bigger weapon. So the fact that you get to reuse the supplies if you fail is kind of a bigger deal. Also. That second ability where you can deal one damage to the attacked enemy even if you miss, it's not going to come up very often, but the times it does, it's probably going to win you the scenario. Because, you know, if you have the actions left to keep fighting, you probably just want to keep fighting, but there are sometimes situations where you just need to deal one more damage to an enemy and it will kill it and then you're done. And the chainsaw can guarantee that damage, which is quite powerful on a weapon. So what is today going to be? Well, we have a chainsaw, we don't have a lot of subtlety, Let's go to Return of the Last King and just start chainsawing people. So I built this solo Stella deck basically around the idea of, you know, trying to show off chainsaw. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to be chainsawing as many people as possible. And since this, this is the Last King and we are trying to parlay these guests, I suppose I'll also try to do that. If you have seen me play through the Last King before, you probably know what the scenario is. If you don't, don't worry about it because I'm not really doing a campaign or anything. I'm just going to, you know have some enemies show up and chainsaw them to death. So let's do opening hand. Well, <laughs> I swear I didn't stack this deck. Uh, we have chainsaw, seems good, that's our main card. Uh, we have two copies of resourceful, those can get a survivor card back, so they could get our chainsaw back. Um, we have this little thing. So one thing you might not have noticed about the chainsaw is that it actually doesn't use ammo, it uses supplies, which for the most part doesn't really matter because any cards that, or most cards, uh, that you care about refilling the chainsaw also do ammo. So we have like Venturer and Contraband. And I think there's like one more. There's a couple of cards that don't. There's like extra ammo, but that just does firearms. Um, but there is one card, and that is Emergency Cash, that uh, level three, that places four supply tokens. It does not give any ammo. And yeah, I mean, I figured why not, right? So this is basically a kind of reload for our flame or for our flame for our chainsaw. Uh, puts four charges on it or gives some money. Both are good. So I think we're going to keep the chainsaw, obviously, in the emergency cache. We have a live and learn. This card's pretty crazy with chainsaw because you can miss the attack, put the ammo or the supply back, and then make another free attack, basically. Uh, so I'm actually pretty happy with most of this. I'm just going to mulligan these three. Okay, so we've drawn into a stunning blow. Pretty nice. Just to evade something while also attacking them. Ace Crowns for Supplies, which can get us back a level 0 card. And a Take Heart, which when we fail, we get to draw 2 cards, gain 2 resources. It's just a bit of economy. Okay, well, let's get started. Oh, I forgot to change the amount of clues. Only a single investigator today. We're just going to, you know, change up people. Um, so for a start, I mean, it would be wrong. We have the option of a turn 1, play the chainsaw. So we're going to turn 1, play the chainsaw. Yeah, so this comes into play with three uses, and now no matter what comes, we can change it. Uh, you know what, why not? So second action, emergency cash, 
Place four more charges on the chainsaw. Okay, let's get this party started right. Six, and this should be seven. Right? Hold on. One, two, three, four, yeah, okay. Uh, and let's see, well, we could stay here, but we kind of want to talk to people. So let's go talk to Ashley. We'll move into the living room, which is a, a three shroud location with zero clues. When we parlay in here, we get to draw a card. And Ashley, of course, we can double action to parlay with her, take one of her clues. And when we have all of her clues, we get to do a story thing that we don't really care about today. We're not here to party. We're here to chainsaw people. Resourceful, I did shuffle, right? Oh. Mimple's face, first doom out of three. Encounter card, it's a maniac. Well, that describes the both of us, buddy. So this is a three fight, four health, one evade enemy that has the ability forced after it engages you, you take a damage and the maniac takes a damage. Get out, get out, get out of my head. He attacks for one damage. Well, uh, it just so happens that this does plus two damage. And this guy has three health left. So, I mean, I feel like there's a thing I could be doing here and I think I'm going to do it. So we are attacking. We get plus two combat. Brings us up to a nice five versus three. It's not the best odds, but, you know, they're not the worst either. And we draw an Elder Sign. Stella's Elder Sign. We could make this an automatic failure. We get the ammo back. We get the action back. But I don't really feel the need to heal damage in a horror. We've only taken one damage. So I'm just going to... You know, tear right through him. Ashley probably looking quite aghast as Stella walks into the room and chainsaws somebody in half. Why didn't that work? Come on. Okay, well, our second action is just going to be, or second and third action, just going to be to take a clue here. Uh, upkeep. Ah, and here's one of the other cards that I've put into this deck. So the idea for this deck, I mean, I guess I can talk about that now, was to showcase Stella as a... Pure, pure fighter build basically there's no real clue tech in this deck so i'm assuming that if this were like a real campaign i would be playing alongside maybe a seeker who has a lot of clue powers maybe some someone like luke um but right now this is just a deck that basically is just all about fighting and a couple of the ways i've done that because i've actually only still got two weapons i got two copies of chainsaw and that's it is i can use active desperation which is a very wordy event but basically you get to throw an item that takes up hand slots which gives, uh, and if you do that, you get extra combat bonus um, equal to the printed cost of the weapon. And if you succeed, you get money back, assuming it was in play. Uh, and then, after I've thrown the, the the chainsaw, assuming it's empty, of course, like we, we empty the chainsaw, we throw it with active desperation, and then we get it back with resourceful, and then we get to play it again. Worth pointing out that one of the other survivors that could take uh, both all of these cards is uh, William Yorick who is already a bit of a fighter and uh, who would really like, I think, that combo because his ability lets him play the chainsaw from the discard pile. So you don't even need the resourceful in that point at that point. Oh, that's pretty neat. And we draw a Delusory Evils. This is either Ancient Evils or we put it into our hand and when we would succeed a skill test by three or more, we automatically fail instead. Well, choice between Ancient Evils or something else, it's usually right to pick the something else. I'm going to spend two actions to parlay with Ashley. I'm not going to bother with all of her text. Just know that I have uh, remembered that I've interviewed Ashley. And we'll flip her back. Oh, also we get a draw card. Sorry, I completely forgot about that. I mean, it is a, a voluntary trigger, so I, I'm not technically cheating. I'm just misplaying harsh, which, you know. Uh, last action, we're going to investigate. I'm going to commit take heart. Elder Sign. Now we would succeed, but I'm going to choose to automatically fail here. Heal a damage. Draw two cards. Gain two resources. And get an extra action. Which is good, because what I just drew are actually two pretty powerful assets. So I've got the leveled up Rabbit's Foot, which I think is probably one of the better XP expenders in Stella. Every time you fail, you get to search the top X card of your deck for a card. So X is the amount you fill by. Just an upgrade over the rabbit's foot, which is draws cards. And uh, we've also got Jeffica High. Now, because this is a pure combat uh, build, I wanted to grab an ally that also helped me fighting. And Jessica is that ally. 
giving us plus one combat. She enters play with two damage and then she heals one damage per turn, which is very much like Peter Sylvester. Uh, I'm going to play her now because it is the end of my turn. So she immediately goes from two damage to one damage. Then we go to upkeep. Not without a fight, a card I haven't actually tried that much, but given that, you know, there were uh, this is supposed to be a pure fighter build, I figured I'd give it a try. You can only commit it while you're engaged with an enemy, but then it gets quite a few icons, so it's kind of exciting. Okay, we advance, there's a whole bunch of flavor text, and then we find uh, Diana D uh, Divine, the... Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Diana Divine, hiding an oath unspoken. Who has to spawn at a ally or at a uh, VIP who has clues on him? It's gonna be Jordan. Uh, I don't think I can do Jordan's ability anytime soon because you need money for it. And we also find shocking display. Put that and the encounter discard ball into the encounter deck. And now every time the agenda hits three doom, we're going to flip one of these sickening reality cards, which is going to you know. Spice up the party a bit. I also just realized one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, no, I'm still good. Anyway, uh, encounter cards. I did I not shuffle? I think I forgot to shuffle. Give it another go. Dance the Yellow King. If there's no lunatic enemies in play. It gains surge. There are no lunatic enemies in play. There's no enemies in play of any kind. There is a lunatic enemy. It's a young psychopath. First, after young psychopath engages you, you must either take one horror or she gains plus three fights until the end of the investigation phase. So this is quite interesting because it showcases, or at least in my mind immediately, it, it kind of reveals this uh, these options. Because I'm a survivor, I can basically go either way. Because if I take one horror, this test is super easy, right? It's a combat two test, I have a chainsaw. That problem solves itself. If I go to the higher fight, it's going to be a little bit more difficult, but I also have more tricks that work at that point. And I still have this delusory evil, so I'm going to probably fail the first test anyway. I'm going to go with the horror right now, because this deck, being a very combat Stella deck, of course is running fight or flight, which gives plus combat and plus agility for every horror on you, so I kind of want to stock up on some horror. First action, I'm going to try to chainsaw her. I've got free combat base, plus one from Jessica, plus two from the chainsaw. So I am at six versus two. I don't think I want to commit anything else there. Uh, if I draw minus one or higher, I'm actually going to discard this and automatically fill. Um, okay, well, I'll choose to have this be a plus one. So I will not automatically fill, but then I will automatically fill and get the Desolator of Evils out of my hand. But because I failed this attack, I can either deal one damage to the Psychopath, which, no thank you, or I can put the ammo back, which I'm going to do. Well, the supply back, but you know what I mean. Uh, second action is going to be very similar to the first. Attack her again. Minus four. I am at six versus two, so I am good on that part. Discard the young Psychopath. And for my last trick, I am going to play a rabbit's foot. All right. I don't believe Diana has to do anything right now because she has to move to a bystander with the fewest clues with, among VIPs that do have one clue. And she already is there, so that's fine. Jessica healed one damage. Draw a card. Gain a resource. Come on, go into the trash can. I know you want to. Doom, encounter card. It is fine dining. I must either place one of my clues on a bystander asset in play or take a whore and a damage and it's peril so I can't tell you what I'm going to be doing. No, I'm going to take a damage and a whore because again, I don't... So, eh, I could also put a clue but it feels a little cheaty because clues are really important in this scenario so if I was playing, you know, legitimately I probably wouldn't want to do that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to move into the gallery. Forced, after you end your turn in the gallery, test willpower two. If you fail, place one of your clues on the gallery. Okay, so we don't want to stay here too long. We do have a decent willpower. Um, 
So it's not great, and parlaying with Sebastian probably isn't going to go too well. Let's give it a shot. First action, I'm going to parlay. Just three versus three. Uh, again, you know, if we succeed, we get a clue. So minus four. Okay, so we fail, and a bunch of stuff is going to happen. After we fail skill test, we take an additional action. After we fill skill test, exhaust it. Search the top X cards for X amount of fill by. Difficulty of the test was three, so we can't fill by more than three. So we're going to choose fight or flight, trial by fire, or resourceful. Uh, let's grab the card we don't actually have yet. Let's grab a fight or flight. Is my computer. Okay, sorry. I think the game was lagging slightly. Then I'm going to retry the skill test with a plus two skill value with live and learn. Still second action. Out of fail. Uh, okay, well, nothing to be done about that. Kind of disappointing. I was hoping to, you know, luck into getting a free clue there and then having an extra action, but I guess it wasn't meant to be. So the question now is, do we stay in the gallery where we risk dropping our clues? Or do we and try to, you know, get Sebastian despite not really having a hand that's set up for that? Or do we head out into the courtyard where other things may be lurking? Let's go to the courtyard. Shimaru's there. Shimaru's a nice girl. Courtyard. After we enter the courtyard, we have to discard the top card of the encounter deck. If it's an enemy, we have to draw it. Come to us. Well, nothing we can change for, so we just let it go. Then I will parlay with Ishimaru. It's a willpower 3 test. We do have 6 cards, so that's fine. Uh, 1 over. Succeed. We'll get a clue. Awkwardly, this does make Diana come here and... Okay. So, heal the damage from uh, Jessica. Enemy face. Diana notices that Ishimaru has only one clue on her. Comes over here and now we can no longer get parlay uh, with her. So we can't discover, or at least, well, we, we might be able to parlay with her. Can't discover or uh, take control of those clues. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hand size is still good. We got a second act of desperation. Just waiting for the bad guys to show up. One more turn. Young psychopath. Um, you know what? Let's let's give her plus three fight. Let's see how this goes. Uh, main reason for doing that is because I have a lot of combat icons in my hand, and I feel that uh, you know I don't want to rush the horror too much. I want to take kind of a steady stream of it. Because, you know, once these VIPs start flipping, they start getting really nasty very quickly. I'm going to commit, I'm going to attack her, commit uh, not without a fight. So we start at six. Not without a fight has two combat icons because uh, it has base one and we're engaged with one enemy. So it's another one. So that's eight versus five. And I think I'm just going to throw in the resourceful nine versus five. Minus one, we could feed. Resourceful gets us back. A live and learn. Uh, we kill somebody again. And yeah, okay, so that's the encounter card dealt with. We can't go to Jordan yet because we need 10 resources to talk to him. We only have four. We could go to Constance. We don't have our nice clothes on, but maybe she'll someone to talk to us. Move. Here we can heal horror uh, by eating terrible things. Let's not do that. Um, let's parlay with Constance instead. So two versus three. Skull, ooh. Minus two. So the skull is reveal another token. If you fill, put a doom on a lunatic enemy. There's no lunatics in play. Um, we filled by three. Uh, so we can get a nighter in our snow. Come on. Tabletop Simulator has been having some issues lately. I'm kind of bothered by it. Uh, we'll play Live and Learn. So we are now 4 versus 3. And we will Neither Rain or Snow. 7 versus 3. Plus 1. We take control of one of her clues. And then, because we have an extra action, we'll try again. This time it's just 5 versus 3. Elder Thing. The Elder Thing is minus X. X is the Shroud Valor location. It is fortunately only 2. So we take this clue and we remember that we have interviewed Constance. All right, two VIPs interviewed by the time 
the first one starts flipping, it's pretty decent. I mean, given that this is solo, I think we're actually doing pretty well. I mean, we do get, obviously, a bit more XP than you normally would have. Uh, this is standalone after all, but still, it's not terrible at all. So, shuffling, and that one. Sickening reality, it's Sebastian. Okay, so everyone at Sebastian's location takes a whore. Every clue goes to his location, and this replaces... Sebastian, and it is Sebastian Moreau, Savage Hysteria, a 3 combat, 5 health, 3 evade, monster lunatic elite with Hunter and Retaliate, and his attacks cannot be cancelled, 2 damage, 2 whore. This is an absolute beast of an enemy, but fortunately still as good at those. Uh, we draw on a counter card. Oh, well we might get a chance to show off how good Stella is at this, because we drew Dance of the Yellow King. And you'll note that the VIPs are very much lunatics, which means that uh, if there's an, uh, there is a lunatic enemy, we have to test ball power of three, and if we fail, we're gonna get hit by a big nasty enemy. Fortunately, we drew a plus one, we're good for now, and we should try to set ourselves up to, you know, deal with him in a minute. Uh, well, can't parlay here, can't really parlay here. We'll move down ballroom. Fortunately, we can't parlay there because it would be very nice because we get resources, but we need the resources. Um, checking my discard pile real quick. I'm just going to spend a second action to scrunch for supply, getting back a resourceful. And then I will gain a resource. Okay, enemy face, Sebastian moves over here. We go into the upkeep. Draw another Jessica, gain a resource, one doom, and counter cards. Shocking display. Okay, we get another thickening reality. Let's hope it's. Uh, <laughs> well, if it's Jordan, it's gonna get really interesting here. If there's no party guests in play, we have to place a card back under and find a new one. Well, there's no party guests right now, so. It is Diana. Uh, Diana Divine, everyone there takes one horror. And we swap this Diana for the old one. Four uh, combat, three health, two evade, monster cultist, lunatic elite. Preys on the most clues with Hunter. Diana Divine gets plus three health per investigator, so she has six health. Forced after any investigator points a parlay action, move Diana Divine once towards that investigator. Victory one, combat or a health and a damage. Oh, sorry, a damage and a whore. Okay, so we've got two enemies here. Both are pretty nasty. Let's do this. So move in. We have to, because of the text on the courtyard, we have to put another card. Chance at another enemy. Fortunately, it is not. Let's see how much damage we can do. I think it's gonna be a lot. Okay, so I think my game plan here is start by trying to evade Sebastian. And by evade, I mean start by punching him with a stunning blow. Uh, basically, once he's once he's evaded, right, I know I'm not gonna take any attacks from him. So that should be, I think, priority one. Uh, so I'll commit the stunning blow on a chainsaw attack. Brings me up to 6, 7 versus 3. Should be good enough. But, you know, should be is not a thing Arkham listens to. Reveal another token. Reveal another token. Minus 1. Okay. Uh, so we hit. The Chainsaw deals plus 2 damage. So we inflict 3 damage. And we evade Sebastian. Just you wait. It's about to get way crazier. Attack Diana. With the Chainsaw. Uh, six versus four. Let's uh, well, let, you know, let's try it at six versus four. Ooh, negative three. We fill. Oh no. Uh, we get to draw a card. Oh, excellent. We get to put our ammo back. We get an extraction. We do need to kill her, and I don't think we get to now. Kind of a shame. Uh, let's try to kill her. 
Or let's keep attacking. I'll commit a second Jessica. Minus three again, but this time we had Jessica in there, so we deal three damage. Okay. Uh, reasonable uh, combat so far. Uh, in the enemy phase, we will take one damage on Jessica, one whore, and then Sebastian will also get back up. And we go to the Mythos phase. Doom and an encounter card. Please be another enemy. No, it's Fragile Thoughts. Discard cards with a total print. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Okay, this is gonna hurt real bad. Discard events from the, your hand with a total printed cost of at least X, where X is Shroud Value for location. If no cards are discarded by this effect, Fragile Thoughts gains Surge. Unfortunately, Shroud Value is 5, and I have <laughs> 1, 2, 3, Four. Ow. <laughs> okay, so I just lose, lost most of my hands. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna attack uh, Diana. And I'm going to commit the resourceful. Three over again. Minus two, we hit. Uh, that, uh, as they say in the business, kills Diana. And now I have to think very carefully about what I'm getting back with this resourceful. I think I know though. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go get back the act of desperation. Second action, I'm going to attack Sebastian. Actually, no, I'm going to play act of desperation to attack Sebastian. So, as an initial cost to play this, I have to discard an item asset that takes up at least one hand slot from hand or play area. We'll pick the chainsaw. Fight. We get plus X combat and deal plus one damage attack. X is the asset's printed resource cost. Four, so we get a plus four combat here. Minus one, we hit. Uh, if you succeed and the asset was in play, gain X resources. So we get back four resources. We also kill Sebastian. To the victors play with you. Uh, which nicely gives us enough money to go parlay with Jordan in a minute. Uh, I don't have any. I don't have enough cards anymore, so I can't actually parlay with Ishimaru anymore. Uh, so I'm just gonna run over here and hopefully parlay him before more people go insane. Although that's probably not happening. Uh, okay, so Jessica heals one damage. We draw a card. It's kind of bad that our chainsaw deck doesn't have a chainsaw right now, but you know, well, we'll improvise. Survivors are good at that. And it's Ashley. Ashley goes insane. Starts murdering people. Please don't. Uh, encounter cards. My person. Also, sorry, I just realized something. I made a slight misplay. I checked this card into the victory display, but it has, or into the discard pile, but it has victory zero. It should be over here. My bad. Uh, Mark by the sign. Willpower two. We feel we have to take two horror. I'm not too worried. Oh, I'm starting to get worried. Super worried about it. Oh boy. Okay, so every one of these skulls reads if you fail, place a doom on another lunatic enemy. So I just put two doom on Ashley and I take two horror. Uh, <laughs> that's not good, guys. <laughs> that's not good. Okay, uh, reveal the top two cards of the encounter or of our deck. Let's draw a card. Uh, I think fine close. It's kind of too late for fine close at this point. Um. I guess maybe maybe I should have grabbed the fine clothes so I can parlay pair. Actually, you know what? I'm right. That's right. I should grab the fine clothes instead. You're right. First action, play fine clothes. Second and third action, parlay parry twice. Don't auto fill me. Thank you. Fear well, a lot of skulls today. Uh, parlay Jordan twice successfully. Because the difficulty is now zero. Fine close reduces the difficulty of parlays, and it's only an intellect of two. So get these two clues. Parlay Jordan. Enemy faith. Ashley goes over here. Hunting. Seething. Uh, we draw a card. Oh, it's a thing that follows. It's our one of our basic weaknesses. This is a 90 XP deck, so there's two basic weaknesses. I think they're both enemies. Uh, I think the follow spawns over there. Uh, we get a resource, and we go to Mythos phase, and we immediately advance again. Thanks, skulls. And it's Mr. Perry. 
So we take one horror. And there's now this huge hunter on us. And this was the time that we realized maybe we're in a little bit of trouble. The main problem here is that we need to find some way to get ourselves under a chainsaw. Which, you know, story of my life. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm just going to try to evade Jordan and Ashley. Not sure how long I win that, that one for, but we could give it a try. So I'm going to try Trial by Fire to set my base agility. Actually, that doesn't really help that much. Never mind. Hold on. Different change, change of plans. I think I'm going to start by just evading Jordan. Uh, so four versus two. Zero. Excellent. I think I might just actually investigate here. I'm two versus four, or two versus four, so chances of getting a good rabbit's foot are pretty decent. Yeah, I'll do that. Oh, why did I? Sorry, my apologies. Tabletop simulator is having some issues today. Uh, negative three, fill by four. Please, there she is. There she goes. Third action, play, chainsaw. Last action. I think I'm just going to move. Where am I going to move to? Because I don't want to take double horror right now. I'm going to move over here. Enemy phase, hunter, hunter, and then upkeep. Uh, there should be three supplies on here. So I'm not saying this is the worst position I've ever been, but it's not looking great. Uh, so we may want to, you know, we may want to consider how many more we want to kill before we get out of here. Losing our entire hand to that uh, Fragile Thoughts was uh, kind of nasty. Okay, well this is kind of a do-nothing right now, because we're not worried about clues or, or parlaying or whatever right now. Um, so yeah, the thing is that... If I don't want to just go insane, I kind of want to have to kill Ashley this turn. And if I'm doing that, probably have to take a hit from Jordan and the thing that follows. I'm going to have to take some hits. It's just like, I wish I had one more action is definitely what's going on here. I'm going to move in here. I'm trying to figure out if there's some way I can fail a test reliably. I don't think there is. Uh, I'm going to throw a fire, naming combat, which gives me basically plus two combat for this entire round. Uh, Chainsaw Ashley. Hey, now there's a site for sore eyes. I'm going to heal a damage, heal a horror, put the charge back, get an extra action. I get search for two. Uh, that seems really good here. Uh, I'm going to attack again. Actually, with the chainsaw, uh, do I immediately commit resourceful, try and get something useful back here? I mean, live and learn would be really strong in this situation, so yeah, I think I do. Minus three, that's a hit. Three damage, get back a live and learn. Yeah, so if I miss this last attack, it would be great. Right, so the, the logic here is that if I miss, I can then live and learn and hit. Uh, and I get to... Wait, no, I don't get to actually take an extra action because I've already taken an extra action. Never mind, I am um, completely forgotten about that. Uh, attack again. Negative one. Uh, actually done, done for. Okay, victory display is too small. Uh, enemy phase, the thing that follows hunts us. And then we both we get hit by two damage and two horror. Getting up there, but I'm not worried yet. I think I think I can do this. Draw a card, gain a resource, doom, and counter card. Party guest with the other party guest. Okay, let's see. I don't have enough damage. Period. <laughs> On the chainsaw to kill Jordan because Jordan heals one damage every round or every enemy phase, and I just don't. So I 
think we're gonna play run around the Jordan until we have a way to get back our other chainsaw or maybe or something. So uh, I think we're just gonna escape, try to escape from Jordan. We're just gonna evade. Oh, sorry about that. Evade four versus two. Negative three, we lucky and we pass. Should I should mention, I've men mentioned in the past that I don't like lucky and Stella and I stand by that for a flex Stella. I think the card is too niche uh, and because too often you don't care if you pass or fail. And this kind of hyper combat Stella deck, I think it's good enough. I think the card definitely gets better uh, in a situation where you often will want to pass your tests. Uh, more than the flex Stella does. I think I'm just going to try to kill the thing that follows right now. Second action, minus one. Okay, so this is shuffled into my deck. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not gonna not gonna be able to outrun Jordan forever, but I do have some time left, so I'm just going to run into the into here. I can spend four resources and two actions to get these out of there, and try to parlay Ishimaru. But you know, we still have, oh well, no, we just ran out of Chainsaw Fuel, so we're kind of out of Chainsaw at this point. Unless we get some kind of shenanigan going, we're going to have to find some other way to kill enemies. Okay, well, let's see what we get. Get another, it's Constance, Constance Domain. Okay, so now the, uh, <laughs> the party's in full swing, and uh, I think it's uh, probably best we left. Uh, bleeding Walls, test willpower X, X is Shroud value, which is 5. If we fail, lose an action and take a horror. I don't really want that. Neither Rain or Snow. We succeed. Okay, so we don't have a lot of Chainsaw left. Uh, I didn't get to do enough active desperation play. If it was up to me, I would have been able to do a little bit more with that, but sadly I can't. Um, and so with the scenario very clearly making it... Uh, well, less than uh, healthy to stay around. I am just going to take an action to move. I'm going to investigate. It's actually succeed, huh? Didn't see that one coming. And then I'm going to take the resign action and finish the scenario. So that was the chainsaw. Uh, not as impressive as my test run, sadly. The test run had a lot more chainsawing, uh, but as hopefully was evident from the cards in my deck, um, you know, there are some, I mean, it's it's Survivor, right? You can get stuff back from Discord Pile, you can put stuff in your Discord Pile. You use Actor Desperation, and you use, uh, where is it, Resourceful. I'm actually running the Scrouncher Supply specifically to get back Resourceful, so I can get back Chainsaw. Uh, I think Stella as a pure enemy manager is actually really good. You didn't get to see it too much here, but a little bit. The ability to evade enemies as well as kill them, I think, is sometimes underappreciated. Because people sometimes are like, well, if you can evade enemies, you should just evade them. And if you can kill enemies, you should just kill them. So why would you need to do both? But I feel that, um, especially Silas, uh, has shown that there is definitely some amount of value in being able to adjust your strategy based on the kind of enemies you're facing. Like, if you're dealing with a big, high-health enemy like Jordan... Maybe just don't start fighting them if you don't have any weapons, and then suddenly the ability to evade is quite useful. Uh, and someone like, again, Sebastian, right? Like, I'm going to kill him, that's the whole point, but I do want to be able to run away from him as well, because that retaliate... Man, that retaliate is nasty. <laughs> too damage, too horror. No, thank you. Um, so yeah, I think... I mean, in general, I think Stella would make a fine uh, enemy manager. I think he's better as a flex like uh, the ability to both investigate and uh, damage and horror, or sorry, and enemies. The thing is that uh, Chainsaw takes the two head slots, and that's not an irrelevant thing because a lot of the clue getting in Stella revolves around things like flashlight and old key ring to set up, look what I found. And you can't do that if you need your hands for chainsaws. That being said, I think it's definitely a deck you can build. And if you have a seeker in your group, it's just gonna be crazy. Just wanted to take real quick, uh, briefly mention the other survivors who can take this card. I don't think Wendy takes it <laughs> because, you know, one combat. I know there's somebody who has done, uh, what was it, Knuc or Knuckle Dusters? Yeah, Knuckle Dusters Wendy, which is the bro card that gives no combat boost. And it's insane. You should look, at, look it up. I'll put that in the description because it's a fun watch anyway. Um, but I don't think <laughs> Wendy's reaching for a chainsaw. 
Um, Pete, kind of, or same kind of same problem. Two combat just doesn't quite get there. Uh, uh, Yorick, I think, is probably the best user of the weapon. Like he's he's definitely like he's off class guardian. He wants to have good weapons. This is a really strong weapon. So yeah, I think, and he can get it back from his Iskar pal to reload it. Really strong. Uh, Kelvin, definitely running this thing. If you're doing a fighty Kelvin and you just want to have a big fucking chainsaw, oh, pardon me. Uh, this is how you do it. Uh, Rita, you can if you don't want to run old hunting rifle. Uh, she's only got three combat, just like, but just like Stella, you can make that work no problem. And you again, you have this evasion ability that's really strong. Um, Patrice, I don't think so. She also like the two combat is less of a problem in her, but it's just she wants her violin, so she doesn't have the hand slot for it. I think you could. I don't think you should, but I think you can. And then there's Silas, which I think, yep. If you just want to have a big weapon, Silas, like a lot of time in Silas, I run smaller weapons and lots of skills because obviously he wants to run lots of skills and that leads it to kind of a lower economy deck but if you want to just run chainsaw silence i don't think there's anything stopping you you know because you got a uh, chainsaw so yeah that's uh that's chainsaw more videos coming soon i have been kind of out of it i'm sorry i apologize but more videos coming soon and uh this was a blast to make so thank you very much for watching and i'll be seeing you until the end of time